Um, I think I had listened to them early on when they didn't have their sound quality and I had dismissed them because I'm really picky about my oh, sound. Oh, I love to hear that. I won't listen Did to you a, hear that, folks? <laughs> I won't listen to a podcast that has bad audio, even if it's very interesting. Podcast Answer Man, episode number 136. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Podcast Answer Man. My name is Cliff Ravenscraft, and today I have a special episode of Podcast Answer Man that I'm very excited about. What you're about to hear is an interview that I did with Mignon Fogarty, who is also known as Grammar Girl out on the web. If you haven't heard of Grammar Girl, go right away after listening to this to Quick and Dirty Tips. Dot com and check out this multimedia empire that she's created, uh, hitting all aspects of new media, whether it be email newsletter lists, blogging, podcasting, uh, YouTubing, and all, I mean, just everything. She's she's out there. And, and again, if you have not heard of Mignon Fogarty, let me just tell you a little bit about her real quickly. Uh, first of all, she is the creator of Grammar Girl, uh, the fan d- founder and managing director of QuickAndDirtyTips.com. And I'm, by the way, I'm reading fr- this from her book. Formerly a magazine writer, a technical writer, and entrepreneur. She has a BA in English from the University of Washington in Seattle, MS in biology from Stanford University, and she lives in Reno, Nevada. Uh, you can visit her website at Quick and Dirty Tips. But, but here's the deal. This is somebody who once uh, had a job as a science technical writer, and she was very successful at what she did, but to be honest with you, she got kind of bored with what she was doing, and she decided to liven things up a bit. She had a love for technology, and she heard about this thing called podcasting, and she decided to start a podcast. Uh, Originally starting off with a science podcast that took her as much as 20 hours a week at times to produce... And eventually leading her to something that was a little bit more realistic for her schedule and, and something that she just kind of fell into, this, this podcasting as a hobby. And you're going to hear the story of how she went from being a technical writer with a hobby to where the hobby became her career. And that is very similar to what happened to me personally. And that's why I really connect with Mignon and uh, relate to what she's talking about. Now, at the end of this interview, there's going to be a a lot of things that I'm going to pull out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play the interview for you now and then stay tuned right after the interview. And I will bring some of the highlights of the things that I really think are important to draw out of the conversation just in case you're not able to take those notes. So without any further ado, here is the interview that I had with Mignon Fogarty, also known as Grammar Girl. All right, so we are here at Max and Irma's with Mignon Fogarty, also known as Grammar Girl. Hi. And I'm also here with my wife, Stephanie, by the way, which is, I think this is an all-time first for you to be on a Podcast Answer Man episode. I think it would be. Yeah. I'm delighted to finally meet you in person. You're such podcasting superstars. Well, yeah, yeah, so are you, I think. But anyway, we're excited that you uh, had a book signing. So you want to explain to folks why you're here in Cincinnati and and, and about your book real quick? Right. Well, my second book just came out, The Grammar Devotional. And um, I've been going around on a book tour promoting it. And I was able to come to Cincinnati to do that because the Cincinnati, uh, the Columbus School for Girls actually invited me to come speak at their school. So that's what got me in town. And then while I was here, I was able to do a book signing, too. Excellent. So, Mignon, this is what I think is something that is going to be a lot of fun to have a conversation about. It is about podcasting, obviously. Right. But the business of podcasting. Yes. Because, are you familiar? Well, obviously, you're familiar with what Michael W. Gohagen had said almost a year ago. And there was I'm not, a, actually. What did he say? He said that podcasting is dead. Oh, of course. Of he's, course. He's the podcasting is dead guy. <laughs> yes. didn't know his name. Exactly. <laughs> and, and That's so, pretty sad when you become known as saying <laughs> podcasting is dead. In a previous episode of Podcast Answer Man, it was not It was actually broad, rebroadcasted on Podcast Answer Man, but you and myself, Adam Curry, and Joseph Jaffe, and a bunch of us got together and talked about the fact that podcasting isn't dead. That's right. That's right. Now, are you familiar with the fact that Leo Laporte has had a little bit of controversy, at least in my world, it's been controversy, but... Uh, 
I, did you see that he had announced to some kind of news corporation? Uh, uh, it was a big conference of mm-hmm. newscasters, media people, I yeah. mean, traditional media people, and they invited him to come and speak about what he's doing and sharing his his information about what he's doing in podcasting new media. Mm-hmm. And he had uh, told people, and this was as of last or last year, that he made $1.5 million in podcasting. Yes, I did hear that. I was very jealous. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? Yes. So, so uh, anyway. But good for him, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Great for him. And, yeah. and I love Leo Laporte, by I the way. Too. I do, and, too. And so uh, just, I just always want to emphasize that. He's an inspiration for me. By the way, he's how I found out about podcasting. Oh, great. Right. So yeah. yeah, huge inspiration. Yeah, for me. I've been on his show, and he's a wonderful guy. He's he great. Is. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, in that same speech, mm-hmm. almost, it, uh, I mean, it was separated by probably about five minutes, but seemingly in the same breath that he says, "I made one point five million dollars in podcasting revenue, advertising revenue." Yeah. He says podcasting is dead, and he uses the phrase podcasting is dead. Oh, I never heard that part of it. Oh, yeah. Overshadowed Go. by the million dollars, I guess. <laughs> exactly. And and so, and, but, and he said it like this, he goes, and, and podcasting's dead. In fact, we knew, podcasting was dead in the, in the beginning. We knew it from the beginning that podcasting was dead. And, of course, he goes, in the same speech, he talks about the fact that they're literally, he's reaching hundreds of thousands, millions of people monthly right. with his podcasting. And he then goes on to talk about the fact that the future is in, is going to be in this web. He's got deals coming up with Roku and all this other right. stuff. Right, yeah, he thinks the future is video and, and, and other other things besides podcasting. He's seeing a plateauing of his audience, and we are too, mm-hmm. actually. So, you know, we do we do two and a half million downloads a month, and it grows when we add new shows, but the, the shows we have are growing at a relatively slow rate. They're still growing. But the the actual growth curve has plateaued. Right. Yeah. So yeah. That, that, and that's the, the exponential th- phase is over. The, the, exactly. <laughs> and, and I totally agree with that. But say, the, saying that the exponential growth phase is over doesn't mean it's dead. Does not mean it's dead. <laughs> no. that, and that has been my point that I've been talking a lot about um, in in podcast yeah. answer man. So I want to talk to you about your podcasting mm-hmm. because obviously you you guys have a you have a network. But before we talk about the network, I want to ask how did you get into podcasting? You were a technical writer, right? And you have a passion for grammar, right? So explain just real quickly. I fell into it. It was my hobby. Um, I was working as a technical writer and I was bored. And I love technology and I wanted to try something new. And it was in uh, middle of 2006. And I heard about this thing called podcasting and I thought I'd give it a try. So I uh, I had to, I did a science podcast first. I did um, absolute science for about eight months and that won awards and it did well. But it was never going to be a business. It, it wasn't big enough and so I was looking for something simpler to do because that show took me 20 hours a week to produce I didn't know what I was doing I was learning how to do the audio I had a co-host who I had to schedule with and he was remote so we had to merge the audio together and then sometimes we would interview a third person and it was it just took a lot of time and so I thought about uh, I was looking for something simpler to do and so doing quick uh, scripted tips by myself it seemed as if it would take a lot less time and um, grammar was something I was interested in so that was what I did and I just threw it up on iTunes and it was in the top 100 within three or four weeks and it's been there ever since yeah so, yeah. so basically the whole idea here and, the, and I consult with a lot of people to train them about podcasting and a lot of people say you know how can I you know I'm trying to figure out what I want to podcast about I want, and what can I do that's going to get me you know tons of listeners yeah. and I'm like no 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 forget about the number of listeners and what is it that you're most passionate yeah. about what is it that drives you I mean what is it that you know you would just talk about all day long and people would be interested in hearing what you have to say yeah that's really the place to start with podcasting because otherwise you're you're going at it in a way that people love listening to passion mm-hmm. you know and and I'm I'm okay with listening to a topic that I don't necessarily find exciting myself, but if I hear that the person who's talking about it is so yes. sold out, passionate about it, I get excited about it. I do too. You know, I subscribe to the Slate podcasts, and they put all their shows on the same feed. And they they launched a new show called um, it's a sports podcast. And I would never in a million years choose to listen to a sports podcast on my own, but it just came on the feed, and I listened to it because it was there. And it's wonderful, and they're so excited about it. And I've actually learned a thing about sports that are fascinating and I listen to this show every week it's it's crazy I mean never if you'd asked me would I listen to a, a sports podcast I would have said no why would I ever do that but 
but they're great. So you're working at this company as a technical writer. Mm -hmm. You've been producing this. You've been playing around, figuring out all the podcasting. You know how to do the podcasting, how to do the double enders. Yeah. Uh, you know, doing the Skype stuff and yeah. and all this other uh, other things. And this is all as a hobby. Are you doing this at night in your free time? Yeah, I was doing it in my free time. Just didn't, you know, I was a freelancer, so you know, sometimes I would have downtime and then I would do the show. We tried to get it out every week. We didn't always get it out every week. So are you a geek then? Are, I mean, I, well, yes, I'm a geek. I've worked dot coms in the late 1990s I la helped launch uh, three or four websites and I can code HTML I still hand code my feeds uh, wow yeah I just I can't you know I like having control over the feeds and yeah, they're all I, I know about that, <laughs> so uh, yeah you know I, I am yeah I'm a geek that's great so so there was the love that's for awesome. the technology I'm a geek by association like I, it's not it's not in me like it is in him it's so I, I love that yeah, if I had time, oh, I would, I would love to learn how to make iPhone apps, and I, oh, I, yeah. I downloaded the software, and I was watching the classes online, and it's just, it's just not a good use of my time, and yeah. it's a little beyond me. But I would love to be able, I still love to tinker with technology. Yeah, that's good, and and that's that's something that really helped early podcasters in the day. Yeah, because you know it was it was it was the wild west. You know, a lot of the things that we're doing today, you know, people are are mimicking because that's how we learned how to do it, and we put out blog posts and stuff and yeah so. I love to edit audio too. I don't edit my own audio anymore Dan Fire Robin does that for us but uh, I, I, I used to love doing it yep. yeah yeah so you you took this passion passion uh, your love for technology drove you to basically pour your hours of your own personal time into this at what point or was there a point that you remember did you decide that maybe this might be something I could do to earn a little income from? I remember when I got my first donation, you know, someone sent me money to say, you know, I appreciate what you do. And that was shocking and wonderful. <laughs> and um, then, uh, you know, I, I heard that there were ad brokers out there and I started connecting with the ad brokers. And I think, we, you know, and it took a long time to get ads. Yep. Um, you know, we had one ad for you know and then we wouldn't have another one for two or three months and uh, the way it turned into a business for me is when um, I got a lot of publicity and the Wall Street Journal chose Grammar Girl as the web pick of the day and publishers approached me to write a book and so I signed a two book deal and got a book advance that let me quit my job okay. and focus on the podcasting and writing the book so it was really the book that initially made it so that I could quit but very soon after that we started getting regular advertisers and now our show has had you know steady advertisers for at least two years so the thing is here the interesting thing you wouldn't have got the book deal had it not been for the podcast oh absolutely had not. it not been for the hobby oh absolutely not yeah and, and so that that's the other in, inspiring thing about this and, and of course you can't orchestrate that I mean people can't folks if you're listening to this and you think I'm gonna get out of my soul-sucking job because <laughs> you know all I need to do is start start a podcast and get discovered it there's no formula for no. that uh, we're the anomaly. I mean, uh, sadly, you know, there, there aren't. There, I mean, podcasting isn't dead, but there aren't. I don't think there are a lot of people still who make a living at it. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, the book deal came along. That allowed. That's what allowed for the financial uh, ability for you to leave your career. Right. And now. Once you've got the advertising come in, how much of how much of an income is that? I mean, I don't want numbers, but yeah. I mean, like percentage wise, uh, compared to where you were working before, and, and actually, stuff like I that. make about the same amount of money I made as a technical writer, and I was a relatively successful technical writer. You know, I was in a, a, a niche where a lot of people there aren't a lot of people who know science and genetics and also can write. So I did pretty well as a technical writer, and now I make about the same amount of money. But from I'm podcasting. from podcasting. Okay, but I'm much much happier. Beer. Yeah, <laughs> which makes the difference. It know? really does. Um, in our case, we're we're not quite making what we made before. Yeah, but the changes that it's made in our family are well worth. Oh the yeah, being happy is worth a lot. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'd rather make. I'd rather make. You know, what is it? Three fourths as much as what I made before. 
and be happy and wake up in the morning and can't wait to start what I do and to take an hour off and, and go and have lunch any day of the week I want and just be alone with my wife right? and be able to just stop and work you know I, I have so much freedom over everything which yeah. is, is it is a blessing and the good news is that you know it, it, it appears to be that you know the, the financial over the long haul I'll end up making more money than mm-hmm. I ever would have before right. Yeah, because I love what I do and that passion people are connected to. Right. And stuff. And so, okay, so the income from podcasting mm-hmm. helps, you know, b- bring this in. Now, that has driven, you know, even more sales to books. Uh, yeah, Which absolutely. lead to more books, which is why you're here today right. with a second book. Right. And, you know, the books, the books uh, are more of an annuity. So, you know, I wrote the books and, you know, of course I got an advance and they're selling well now. But the nice thing about the books is, okay, the work is done and those will continue to sell for... You know, who knows, 10, 15, 20 years, and I'll get residual income from those books. Because, I mean, with what I do, they're reference books. So they're not like fiction where you get your first, all your right. big sales in the first year and then it trickles off. That My books, they're, they're selling very, very steady. So, you know, the my first book, which came out a year and a half ago, this month sold, you know, almost as much as it did the second month it was out. So it's, it's going to be nice and steady, and every new book I write will add on to that. Right. So it's a nice little annuity. Gotcha. So, okay, so tell us then, when did quickanddirtytips.com come available? You had Grammar Girl. Right. Which was uh, quick and dirty tips for, for grammar. grammar. Right, and because I worked at internet startups in the 90s, you know, it, Thank you. Because I worked for internet startups in the 90s, it, it was just the obvious thing for me to do when Grammar Girl became so successful. I said, well, this can be a business. And I thought that it was the format that was working really well, the yeah. five-minute scripted quick tip that you can use that week. And so um, I first started with just, uh, just my friends. I said, "Hey, I've got this podcast thing going. You wanna, you wanna be the mighty mommy? You know, this woman I knew who just had a good voice and was a good mom. You know, and she said, sure. And Money Girl and Legal Lad and the Traveling Avatar. We all, um, those were all just people I knew. And so we did that. And then. Um, at that point, that was when uh, my book deal came about, and the reason I chose Macmillan as my publisher is because they had a strong digital initiative for a okay. publisher. They're very forward-thinking, and they were interested in investing in the network as well. So I partnered with them um, to grow the Quick and Dirty Tips podcast network. So they then invested money in that. They, um, you know, now we, they have a, hired a full-time editor, a full-time business development guy, and they really do a, a lot of the work too almost pretty much all the work now to get the new shows launched to choose the hosts to edit the scripts and to get the new shows launched and because they view it as um sort of a farm league for authors you know if a a podcast can become successful then that person can write a book with Macmillan right and you know they hope that the quick and dirty tips brand will eventually become competitive with the dummies brand yeah so you know it's funny people talk about companies don't plan long term but Macmillan is privately owned by a German family and they think very long term you know they're thinking about 10 and 15 years you know what they can do with this brand so they're really committed to it and they've been a wonderful partner that is amazing yeah. So the so here here's what I find is that probably the idea of going into podcasting as your sole income mm-hmm. is probably not the best idea. No. And, and you know, of course, you, those who listen to me, if they think that podcasting is the only thing I do, then then they're wrong. I mean, I, I spend most of my hours each week doing consulting and equipment sales. Which, by the way, any of your new podcasters who need equipment, I know a guy. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing that in there. But anyway. Um, Somebody who has a passion or a business, um, one of the things that I'm working with, or one of the things that I'm doing right now is I'm working with a lot of people who have uh, independent coaching, like they're doing life or sales, or they're business coaching, life coaching. Um, I've got people who are dentists now who, who are st- starting podcasts. They're, they're wanting to become the experts in a field. Yeah. And, and that's something I see that's going on. By the way, you know, I, Monica Reinagle, yeah. I love her podcast. Yeah, the Nutrition Diva. It's fantastic. So she has a wonderful podcast, and I listen to it, and it's helped, you know, through my Pursuing a Balanced Life, it's helped me to, to learn a lot of new things. What's so funny? Um, just our children when he turns on Nutrition Diva in the car. Yeah. 
they're not fans. Oh no, why? <laughs> but they're all ten and under. <laughs> but they're all under ten. They don't like it that every time Dad gets in the car, he turns the radio off and it's all podcast oh. all the time. <laughs> They'd rather hear music. Oh well, it, it has nothing to do with her personally. Okay, good. Yes, yeah, it's not just her. It, but but when we're in the car. I, out of all the podcasts, they'd rather I would, listen to her than Leo Laporte. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, oh, poor Leo. Leo. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, the, I guess what are your thoughts on people? You know, can podcasting help people establish themselves as a go-to person or a, somebody who's an expert in a field? Uh, what are have you seen that happen with some of the people in your network? I have more more. Um, we actually are trying to hire people now who already are mm. experts and want to grow their business. So we're looking for people who are already maybe have a speaking um, business around their topic area. You know, uh, the public speaker. She already did um, speaking training when we brought her into the network. Um, gotcha. The Get It Done guy, he, he already did speaking um, when we brought him into the network. So th- these days we're looking more for people who already have sort of an established... Um, you know, business or have established themselves as some sort of expert and maybe are looking to grow their business. Yeah, and that's, or what, yeah, and that's what I've been working with. Yeah. Yeah. So, so th- that's the idea here is that you you're al- you already have some experience here. Mm-hmm. But your experience, a lot of time, what I'm finding is the experience is within a certain area that you've managed to network in. Mm-hmm. And what I'm finding is that podcast helps with, a podcast helps with yeah. is it really puts you in front of a much larger community. And it's not just podcasting. It's when I, I tell people when you podcast, you should probably be on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Have you a should blog. Al- yeah. You should also have a blog and you should also be using a YouTube channel for something. Yeah. You know, just putting your stuff out there. But what I find is that it takes you're you're already an established in your experience and knowledge and wisdom, and this is a great way to all of a sudden be the person where if somebody oh well the person you need to talk to is the nutrition diva. I was like you got a question about you know writing you should probably talk to Grammar Girl right you know and I'm hoping that you know okay. you want to start That's podcasting right here okay you want to talk about podcasting you, should, you need to talk to the podcast answer man right. Thank you. We'll be right back with your food, sir. Thank you. We'll be very I mean, I guess it is true. Uh, I, 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 I should not forget that I may be a prime example of how you can do this because, uh, you know, it was because of my podcast that I was invited to be on the Oprah Winfrey show. Yeah. You know, the producer's sister was a fan of my podcast, and then another um, another one of the producers at the show was also a fan of my podcast. So when they were looking for someone to come in and speak about grammar, you know, two people within five minutes said to the producer in charge of the segment, if you're going to do something about grammar, you have to get Grammar Girl. Yeah. So it was directly because of the podcast that I was invited to be on the Oprah Winfrey show. So <laughs> it can happen. Can I tell you how much I love that that lady was wrong? I know. I'll get a sparage wire for you. Did everything come out okay? It looked, well, I'm just waiting for the chicken. And the oh, okay, rice. yeah. That was... <laughs> More than a bowl of cheese. Yes. Any box or anything? Should we break while we eat? Yeah, here, we'll go ahead and pause, and then we'll come back <laughs> afterwards. Okay. All right, so we're back, and uh, we have no idea what we were just talking about there for you guys. But we had a lovely dinner. Well, we had, we had a dinner. fabulous <laughs> dinner. Uh, thank you, Max and Irma's. But anyway, we are, we're now just in a completely different phase of conversation, so we just invite you to, to participate and listen to the rest of the conversation. Uh, talking now about... You know, feedback. Let's talk a little bit about that. What kind of feedback have you experienced from your your audience, both good and bad? Let, let's start with some, let's start with something <laughs> negative, and then we'll follow it up with some positive. <laughs> well, there are certainly people who uh, don't agree with my take on things. So, you know, believe it or not, grammar and language can be a very controversial issue because language changes over time. We're not like the French. So, the French have actually a, a quasi government body who rules how the language should be used, the French language. They've been um, in existence since, I think, the 15 or 1600s, and it cracks me up. They call the people on this, it's called the French Academy, and the members are called the Immortals. Oh, yes. <laughs> it almost makes, makes me think of the Saturday morning Super Friends. <laughs> so, but we don't have that in it English. Makes me, when I hear that, I hear, I, I think of the Illuminati. Oh, yeah, or the yeah. Illuminati, to be a, a slightly more serious yeah. <laughs> group. Uh, so, 
We don't have that. Our language is messier, and there are differing style guides that uh, govern, that, that make recommendations. So the recommendations of the Chicago Manual of Style are very different from the recommendations of the AP Style Book sometimes. And, uh, you know, people, and then there are these rules that have been, um, you know, taught 50 years ago, like you shouldn't split an infinitive, or you shouldn't end a sentence with a preposition. But most modern uh, linguists and style guides say that it's it's okay to do those things, but a lot of people were taught that it that it isn't okay. And so when I say now that it's okay to split an infinitive, there's a small um, segment of my audience who vehemently disagrees. So I get you know, mess. Someone accused me of um, spreading barbarisms when I said it was okay to split infinitives. I mean, people get uh, really exercised about these things. So you know, I, I do get those kind of comments every once in a while. Actually, kind of frequently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, but you remember those those kind of comments. I mean, if I add them up, the positive comments are, you know, 20 to 1 against the negative exactly. comments. Yeah. And it's wonderful to hear people say that I made a difference in their lives, that I helped them do better in school or get a better grade on the SAT or maybe get a promotion at work. I mean, I do get messages with people saying that and it's incredibly rewarding. That is, that, and that's another key element about uh, podcasting is, is being able to share what you know mm -hmm. with others and what you, I mean, and, and what you know, and, and 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 by the way, everybody has experience in something, and so just sharing your life online and what you have, have gathered as far as your experience, just talking about that is going to have an impact on somebody else's life as well. Yeah, it's amazing. It's just <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> so, what else about podcasting? Is is there anything that that, that has happened in your life as a res result of just the you know the podcast and the new media world that that you couldn't have ever hoped or dreamed for. I mean, I know the Oprah thing had to have been huge. How did how did that come about? Well, it was directly because of podcasting. So. Uh, I was sitting at my desk minding my own business <laughs> and I got a call from a producer on the Oprah Winfrey show wanting me to come on and be a grammar expert and answer some questions they had from listen, from viewers about language and uh, you know I asked how did they find me and the producer said that her sister who actually lives in China was a fan of the podcast yeah. and a, a, a different producer at the show was a fan of the podcast and when she mentioned that she was working on a segment about grammar they both said within about a 10 minute period term. Well, if you're doing something on grammar, you have to get Grammar Girl. And so, you know, directly, because of the podcast, I was invited to be on the Oprah Winfrey show, which still is just crazy. It, it blows my mind. Are we going to do some know? dessert tonight? Some chocolate cake and banana pie? Oh, no. No, no thank, thank you. Thank you. No. Okay. Uh, one or separate checks this evening? Let's just take one check. Okay, yeah. we'll do it. Thank you. So, um... So, so the Oprah, that was a huge thing, the Oprah Winfrey Show. And then also, I mean, the book deal. I got the book deal really largely as a result of the podcast. I mean, the, the media attention that the podcast got in the Wall Street Journal made the book deal possible, but it all started with the podcast. And, you know, I, I think, you know, being on the Oprah Winfrey Show is, was exciting. I won't discount that in any way, but having my book make the New York Times bestseller list as, as someone who's a writer, that was even more exciting. Yeah. You know, that was yeah. um, a day I'll never forget. <laughs> right. So I have a question for you. Could you ever imagine yourself not do, not producing a podcast now? No. I mean, I, I think about starting new podcasts. I, I can't imagine ever not doing it. It's just part of my life and it's something I enjoy so much. I, I kind of have to. <laughs> so let me ask you this. If you had a ton of free time and you just didn't know what to do with it, what what would be some podcasts that you've just that you think you might start if you ever had time? <laughs> well, I, I I think it would be fun to do an elaborate video podcast. Actually, something with a set and guests and where we talk about language and you know, but you would need an awful lot of free time and and probably money too to do that. Um, you know, I've thought about doing a, a chocolate review podcast so I can try have an excuse to try a different kind of chocolate every week. <laughs> um, those are the two big... I, I actually have another podcast called Behind the Grammar where I talk about just things that I find interesting. It's usually um, related to the publishing business and new media. I talk a lot about Twitter and Facebook because I spend a lot of time doing that. All right. Take your time. Thank, Thank you, you very much. The diet? To go? Do you have to yeah, look up? Yeah, what do you do? That would be great. No problem. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, 
see. So, uh, po- so I do behind the grammar, and I, I joke that I do that podcast. I do everything you shouldn't do if you want your podcast to be successful. So it's not a standard length. One week it'll be seven minutes. The next week it'll be thirty. I don't have standard topics. Sometimes I do interviews. Sometimes I just talk. Um, it doesn't come out in any sort of regular schedule. So I, you know, pe- people said to me, people said to me, oh, you know, you're so popular, you could do anything, and it would be popular. And I didn't think that was true, and it's not. No, you know, not many people listen to Behind the Grammar, and it, it was almost. I'm almost kind of glad they don't. Yeah. <laughs> because it was a. Thank you, you so much. Are you welcome? I'll be right back. It was almost a test to see if the things that I do to make Grammar Girl successful even matter, and they do. So that made me feel better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's definitely uh, when, when you put the work and effort into a format consistency. That there are some. There are some keys to the formula to make something successful. Yeah, you and want to become a regular part of someone's entertainment schedule, yeah, and and to do that, you have to provide something consistent. It, right. That's exactly it, and, and that's what I've been trying to tell a lot of my clients is like, it, whether you choose a four-minute format, a fifteen-minute format, or an hour-long format, that's really not the critical key to the component. I mean, there are the, you depending on your topic, there are reasons why you should choose one or the other. Right. We can work through those. But the important thing is that you're, if you're a four-minute podcast, you're a four-minute podcast. Exactly. If yeah. you're a 15-minute podcast, you are a 15-minute podcast. And if possible, not just to say that you're weekly and one at, one day it comes out on Tuesday, the other day. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very all much. very much. Have thank a great you. evening. Thank you. You've been thank wonderful. You. Thanks. But, uh, you know, you don't put it out one day on Tuesday, one day on Wednesday, and the other week it's, you no, know, it's like Thursday. No, every Thursday night for me. Every it, Thursday night. Yeah. That, that makes it successful because what I'm finding, and, and I'm, I'm like this. I subscribe to many podcasts, and what I do is I, it's like I know that Monday morning when I go for my walk, I'm listening to this show. Yeah. And Tuesday I know I'm going to be listening to this show, and Thursday I'm going to listen to this show. And, it, and if that show's not there... Over time, I'll find a, I'll find something else to replace it because we're all about routine. Yeah, I, I, so many of us are about routine. So absolutely true. Yeah. But but it's fun. Uh, so it's it's good to have a, an outlet though that you can just kind of just share anything. It is. So. Yeah, yeah. I still in in behind the grammar. I still I'm I, I'm, like, I'm like I'm not quite as comfortable sharing personal details about my life. You know, I'm still a little uneasy about that. But yeah. I'm I'm warming up to it. Uh, you know, with Behind the Grammar, I talk a little bit more about my life. And, and I do it more on Twitter and Facebook, too. Yeah. But having so many followers, it I, it just I just feel uneasy. Yeah, I get that. And, yeah. and, and We're I know. getting to that point. There there are, um, in our business, we, we've branded ourselves. Right, I mean, yeah. Basically, we, we are living our lives online and in our podcasts. And, but we've now come to a point where we can't share everything. Yeah. Some things have to be... Yeah, personal private. and private. Yeah, yeah, and and, and th- not that we ever stop being who we are, mm-hmm. but, but you have to keep part of your life for exactly. yourself, or yeah. yeah, just keep yourself safe. Yeah. yeah. Right. Let me ask you one final question here. Uh, what is what kind of podcast do you listen to that inter- in, interests you and entertain you? Well, I listen. I, I really love. Um, I do love all the Slate podcasts. I, the Slate Political Gab Fest and the Slate Culture Gab Fest are two of my favorites. Um, you know, I, I listen to the sports one too as it comes across. Yep. And um, I really, I recently discovered the How Stuff Works and oh, yeah. the, all the stuff podcasts. Yeah. And um, I think I had listened to them early on when they didn't have their sound quality, and I had dismissed them because I'm really picky about my oh, sound. Oh, I love to hear that. I won't listen. Did to you a, hear that, folks? <laughs> I won't won't listen to a podcast that has bad audio even if it's very interesting so I but and then for some reason I think Mark McCrary mentioned to me that they were doing great work and I said really I thought I listened to that and it wasn't very good he's like no give them another try so I listen their their audio is now great and yep. I love their content so I really look forward to those so it but it's the same content it is but it the the audio quality see because that was the that's the thing that I that drove me crazy or in the early days is people said content is king and content's important, but you can't have a king without a queen. Yeah. And the queen is your auto, audio quality. It right? really matters. It really does. Yeah. And, um, you know, lately I've started listening. But for a long time, I only listened to short podcasts. But I don't know why. I just, 
that's what I do and that's mm-hmm. what I like. But lately, I have been listening to longer form podcasts. So I've been listening to um, sporadically to some of the Twit Network podcasts. I like Net at Night. Amber MacArthur's great. And yep. Leo's great. And then uh, I start. I also listen to Geek News Central now with Todd Cochran. With Todd, and, yeah. And that's that's really long. That's over an hour. But I'm really enjoying that show lately. Um, and my, you know, my habits change over time. I, I yep. like the Moth podcast, the storytelling. Um, they have great stories. And I used to listen to This American Life, but now I don't. Yeah. Um, so it, it's interesting. My listening habits have changed over time. Yeah, that, I yeah. find the same thing. I, I subscribe to, usually I'm going to subscribe to about 35 podcasts at any one time. And I probably listen to about eight podcast episodes a week now. Yeah. Which I used to listen to a lot more. But yeah. now that you produce, I produce so much, <laughs> you don't have as much time. Yeah. But yeah, I, and I find that for me, it, it seems like with each change of the seasons, the weather, I sometimes find that I'm changing the pattern of what I want to hear. Oh, really? And with the yeah, weather? Yeah. Oh. It, it's with the weather. It, it seems like, you know, during hot weather, I enjoy listening to, you know, fitness podcasts. Yeah. But when I'm when I'm walking through the neighborhood and it's colder outside, it's like, I, I, I want to hear something that's more comforting or, oh, or something more personal or something like that and, and then there are times when it's like when I'm really stressed out mm-hmm. and I'm I'm on the verge of just burning myself <laughs> out I, I want to hear something more inspirational or yeah. more something that just that makes you see the light at the end of the tunnel the bigger perspective and you know it, it just I, I find that you know it, my tastes change and I will unsubscribe to a podcast and not think a thing of it and then all of a sudden I'll think I wish I knew what was going on with that podcast right now, and I'd oh, go yeah? and come back to it again. Yeah, yeah, stuff, so. yeah. V- video versus audio, as far as what you consume. Oh, I don't watch any video podcasts now because I I'm, I usually listen when I'm going to sleep at night. Um, that's my podcast listening time, and I, you know, there's no way I could be watching video then. I'm, yeah. I'm laying down. I have my sleep phones, which yep. I love. They're these flat headphones that you can sleep in. Awesome. And uh, they're wonderful for uh, listening while you're going to sleep. That's awesome. Yeah. And I also, actually, I also have to listen to a lot of audiobooks. Well, I don't have to. I, I enjoy listening to audiobooks, but Audible is also a sponsor. Yeah. And I'm supposed to recommend a new audiobook every week. Right. And uh, so I, I you know, feel like I should listen to them before I recommend them. So I sp- I'm spending more time listening to audiobooks than I used to, which takes away from my podcast listening time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mignon, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to get to know you more personally, and and I I've been a huge fan of what you're doing with QuickAndDirtyTips.com. Thanks. And uh, check out Grammar Girl, and also my favorite on the network. And I hope you're not offended, no. but I love Monica Reinagel and the Nutrition Diva dot QuickAndDirtyTips.com as well. Oh, she's fabulous. Thank she, you for yeah. yeah. And, and uh, I just say Viva La Podcasting because I, I don't think it's dead. Absolutely, I'm delighted to meet you. I mean, you do 24 podcasts. That just blows me away. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm. Thank you for coming to my book signing and and meeting me and doing this interview and for dinner and everything. It's wonderful. Nice to meet you. Well, there you have it. That is our interview with Mignon Fogarty, also known as Grammar Girl. I encourage everybody to head over to QuickAndDirtyTips.com and just browse the different topics that are covered in her podcasting network. And what's nice is all of her shows do follow a very consistent and very similar format of being about a four to five minute show. And that's something that can easily, if you have a topic there that you see that you enjoy, you can easily fit that into your regular weekly listening schedule. So again, check that out over at quickanddirtytips.com. Now, here at the end, I wanted to just bring you some highlights, some some notes from this interview with Mignon, uh, just in case you were maybe driving in your car or doing your physical activity while listening to this podcast and you weren't able to take notes yourself. I was able to take some notes after uh, the interview was recorded, listening to it, finding out, you know, what is it that I want to highlight and share with you guys? First of all, I wanted, I do want to let you know that the podcast recording that or the interview that you just heard was recorded on my Edderall digital audio recorder. It was recorded with the onboard microphones. I, I did not have anything other than my Edderall recorder, which, by the way, up until the point of this interview was just in my pocket. I mean, that's it, that's the portability and the ease of use of this. You'll notice that the ambient noise, especially if you were to listen to this with your headphones, uh, you will you'll understand that 
you very much feel like you were in this location now. So many times people want to do interviews. They try to go into a, a, a very quiet, solitary place, which sometimes can just, you know, sure, it, it, it keeps it focused and you don't have the music in the background, which uh, the music at the very beginning, uh, there was one song that seemed to be rather loud, but it's it's very clear here that you can hear without any problem at all exactly what was being said and and that's one of the things that I do love about this and in all these situations where I've done interviews with people where there's this ambient background of a restaurant or a crowd or whatever the case may be everybody has always taught me or told me that wow it feels like I'm there having dinner with you guys and so I, I do want to de- point. I do want to point out that I was using the Edderall recorder, no special equipment outside of the Edderall recorder, just the Edderall. And um, I, I have people who purchase the Edderall recorder from me all the time. And not only that, but when you purchase the Edderall with me, it comes with a thirty-minute free um, consultation on how to get the perfect recording every single time whether you're recording an interview in the field like i just did with mignon or whether you're bringing the audio directly off of your mixing board into your edderwall recording uh, for static free and crash free pro uh, recording uh, so that you don't lose any of those um, wonderful interviews that you might do or, or podcast recordings all right so what what can we take away from the the interview here these are the kind of notes that i took first of all it, it was interesting to learn that before she got the quick and dirty tips about grammar, she started a podcast that took her about 20 hours a week to produce, which was this science podcast. And she had a co-host w- that was remote and they were doing something called a double ender. And so he he was recording uh, his content on his side. She was recording her content or conversation on her side. And then in editing post production, she would match those two up and then edit the show down. And and literally one podcast, even if it's a 40 minute show each week, can take 20 hours if you really t- decide to go that route. So one of the things that she found was, you know, I, I'd like to see if I can try something different and she kind of just fell into it. And that, that's the other point that I have here is that she kind of just fell into podcasting. It was something she did as a hobby. It's something she had as a free time. Uh, she, she didn't get into this to make money. That was not her intent. Not that there's anything wrong with trying to find a way to, to uh, launch a podcast to help you increase your profits or income through your business or your brand. That There's nothing wrong with that. But I will tell you that I, I find that in my consulting, and I've been doing consulting uh, full time for two, two years now, and I've been doing consulting and working with other podcasters for four years now. And I will tell you that I've seen a great deal more success for people who are doing this because they love it and they are passionate. In fact, that's one of the things that I found uh, that resonates with me is is she had mentioned that she's listening to the sports podcast, not because of her passion for sports, uh, because she does, she's not a sports person at all, but she says she listens to a weekly podcast, subscribes to and listens to a weekly podcast about sports because she finds their passion and enthusiasm to be something that that draws her into that. And so that's uh, that's interesting. And, and, and something that you should think about. I mean, your passion has to be there. You have to bring your passion to the podcast. And that's something I talk about quite a bit here at Podcast Answer Man. The other thing is, is I, I find it interesting that she's still today hand coding her RSS feeds. Folks, I don't encourage this. Uh, although, if you're a geeky person, you like to be in control. And trust me, I understand about being a control freak. Uh, and not that I'm calling you a freak, Mignon. But... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but I I I think that uh, for most of us the well let's just put it this way back in 2006 when she started podcasting hand coding your RSS feeds was probably a good idea and once you're used to it it you know if it's not broke why fix it and so I, I see doing that but today folks there is a much easier way to get your RSS feeds put out there and uh, have it done automatically. Uh, okay, so she she basically didn't get into this to make money, but she she 
recognized something might be up when she received her first donation. And and people who say, you know, I get so much value out of this that I just want to contribute, you know. And, and she started to recognize some value in the content that she was producing from a financial standpoint. Uh, the other thing that I, I recognize is that she said that this really didn't become a business for her until she got a little publicity or a lot of publicity uh, that led her eventually... Uh, it, it was the Wall Street Journal listening, uh, uh, adding her. I think it was a technology of the month or something. So there's the Wall Street Journal who posted about her that then led to her writing a book. And but the thing here is, is that the book is is something that sure gave a whole lot more credibility to what she was doing. And the book, you know, being on the number, you know, in the, on the New York Times bestselling list, that, that was huge. And then getting on Oprah and all of these other things. But here's the deal. She was a technical writer in a business and she was bored. And it was the podcast that was the catalyst for everything. Um, the other thing that I do want to point out is, and we make sure that we mention this in the interview, and that is, uh, there is no formula for being successful in podcasting. Uh, you know, people want to hire me all the time for my consulting services, and I love that. And one of the things that I believe in is is under promising and over delivering. But I don't intentionally set the bar low. I, I I shoot pretty high with my clients and and what I say that I can do for them. But when somebody comes to me and says, "Cliff, I want to hire you so that I can add you know a significant see a significant." increase in the number of people who are listening to what I'm doing. And and I just really hesitate to to really agree to that kind of consulting call. Now, I with that being said is I I agree to the consulting call immediately upon the understanding that I'm not going to give you a formula for success. But what I'm going to do is I'll be happy to share with you all of my experiences, as much as you want to hear about how I have come to grow audiences and the things that I have done to market my brands, uh, the relationships that I've built and all these other things. And not to mention the fact that, you know, I can bring to you all the experience that I have from, you know, the conversation that I've had with Mignon that you've heard in this. I've had literally hundreds of these conversations uh, without a recorder present uh, with other folks who are doing marketing and branding online, specifically through podcasting. And so, uh, yeah, absolutely. There is no formula for success, you know, and, and you, you probably shouldn't think right now, how can I quit my day job and become a podcasting media personality? Uh, and is it possible? Well, you know, I believe anything's possible if your passion, your heart and your calling and your mission in life uh, is to be that thing. And if that for you is podcasting, then then, you know, who can stop you but yourself? Uh, so I, I'm not going to discourage anyone, but I'm certainly not going to encourage. She, she, she said it herself, and I agree, that we are kind of an anomaly. Uh, but the other thing is, is that we talked about the fact that y- podcasting can put you in a place where you, are, you become the thought leader in a specific niche, and she said, I'm the perfect example of that. And, 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 the, and, and of course, I'm an example of this as well. Many of you, you, f- you found out about me because when you started to ask questions about podcasting, you got excited about podcasting, you, you heard about podcasting, uh, you started listening to a podcast and you thought, I want to do this. And you started contacting other podcasters saying, you know, how do I get started? And I know that 30 or 40 percent of you who are listening to this right now somebody said oh you're thinking about podcasting the person you need to see is cliff ravenscraft over at podcastanswerman.com and i love how she said you know somebody on the oprah show says you know hey we're going to do a a, a segment on grammar and two people within five minutes said if you're going to do something about grammar you're going to have to get grammar girl so that that's pretty important stuff there. The other thing is we talked briefly about feedback and and the fact that you you know what as a podcaster you're going to get some negative feedback and and criticisms and stuff like that. Uh, if you do not have a thick skin, uh, be prepared to grow some thick skin because people are going to be highly critical. People are behind a little bit of an anonymity when they send you an email. They, 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 I don't, I wonder if half of these people suspect whether or not you'll even read their feedback. Uh, but the fact is, is you're going to get some criticisms and just be pre- prepared for that. And just remember this, 
you, you if you're podcasting about your passion i can i this is a formula that i can give you you know uh for for every one piece of negative critical feedback you're going to have a multitude i mean a ton of positive feedback uh, for every one of those pieces of negative criticism. There may be an occasion where you make a mistake or say something stupid where that might be off, you know, thrown off balance a little bit. I've certainly done that before. Uh, But far and above, you know, you, you podcast your passion, you be yourself, you be who you are, be true to your message, and and you'll find that you'll attract the people who are interested in your content. All right, and then, of course, we talked just briefly about the ability to have a positive impact on the lives of others, and and she even mentioned that, you know, she gets these emails from people who says, you know, I can't tell you how much you've been a blessing to me, even with the Grammar Podcast. It's like, listen, you've helped me land uh, a promotion at my job. You've helped me to improve my grades at school. You've helped me get excited about, you know, something that this might become my career, you know, not to be a Grammar Girl podcaster, but, you know, to be a writer, and and so, so you can imagine for Mignon, you, she said, you know, being on Oprah is great, but there, you know, and, and I'm not going to discount that, she says, but being on the New York Times bestseller list for me, that was the amazing thing. And so you can tell that her passion and her heart is in writing and to, to know that she is having an impact on the lives of other people and she's inspiring others to to. Um, awaken the writer within that is awesome that is awesome we we didn't really focus on that a lot but I really want to bring that out and and then emphasize the ability that you have for your passion what drives you there is an ability through podcasting and through connecting with others in new media where you are able to share your message share your passion in such a way that will have an impact on the lives of others Alrighty, and then of course, uh, I started the show off with it, but she could not imagine her life without doing podcasting. Uh, And also, we talked very, uh, and, and, and I think we drove the point home, format and consistency. Format is important, but you know, whether it's four minutes, 15, 25 minutes, it doesn't, that's really not the key critical ingredient. Consistency is your goal. And of course, audio quality my friends and that's where i'd love to help you if you are out there and you're listening and you're looking for the right audio equipment please give me a call if you are looking for uh the perfect uh you know sound and you want to learn how to get a process to where it you know maybe you're spending 10 15 hours a week producing your show you want some you want some tips on how you can uh shorten that process i would love to help you there as well give me a call send me an email contact me via the website, you know, whatever it is, I would love to work with you on any equipment sales. And I would also love to work with you one-on-one to consult with you on how to get the most effective uh, reach with your podcast, how to do some things to improve the look and feel of your site, the, to make it easier for people to subscribe to your content and come back week after week after week. Again, thank you to Mignon Fogarty. This has been a huge blessing to have her and her experience uh, and, and to share that conversation with her. I hope that you found it to be a blessing. If you do check out, um, if you do check out Mignon's podcasting network, if you wouldn't mind, shoot her an email and say, hey, Mignon, thank you so much for spending the time with Cliff on Podcast Answer Man. And, and if you were inspired by the things that she said, please let her know that. Just send her an email. It, it's real easy. Just hit Head over to her website. Um, it should be grammargirl.quickanddirtytips.com. If that's not right, just go to quickanddirtytips.com. Follow our site. And there's got to be a way on that site to contact her. I, I guarantee you that. Anyway, thank you for listening to another episode of Podcast Answer Man. I will be back to my normal live schedule soon. Uh, this coming week, we are moving our live show to Wednesday because of Thanksgiving, but then we'll be back to our normal schedule. Of course, if you ever want to catch a show live that we do where we have just a few people from the community come and interact all day long over the course of the day, I think we have about 150, sometimes up to 800 people over the course of a 12 hour period of time recording live on the internet one day as many as nine or ten episodes uh, i encourage you to come check that out and be a part of the community uh, just if you want to learn what our show schedule is just head over to gspn.tv schedule all right i'm done talking 
That was a fun episode. Thank you guys for hanging out. And uh, tell somebody else today about podcastanswerman.com. God bless. We'll talk to you soon.